Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, let me introduce myself. I am Kajiomi Thasan, currently completing my undergrad in Ruit. Well, I love to play with data and sometimes make YouTube videos. Well, jokes apart, in this video, we are going to learn about MNIST sign language classification using deep learning methods. First, let me tell you about the dataset in which we will be working on. So, if you search on Google, with signed language MNIST, then you will find this Kaggle, Kaggle notebook or Kaggle dataset. And if we go into data section and read this, that it, the dataset format is patterned to match closely with the classic MNIST. Well, I have to add something that if you are new here, then I am highly recommending you to check my previous videos on MNIST. That will help you to understand this notebook or this video. Each training and test set has represents level of 0 to 25. Well, that's an important factor. And you can see that the training data has 27,455 cases and the test data has 7,172 cases. Well, this is the small description of data. You can read the whole data to get some more insights or learnings. Moving on in our notebook. Well, in the first cell, I'm importing all these libraries. Well, let's run it. And in the next cell, I am importing the datasets. Uh, it, uh, as you can see, that sign in is in training folder. We have a C two CSV files. One is train.csv and one is another is test.csv. So then I am running this cell, and you can see that it has labels and all the pixel values. Then I am running in the cell the train.info. Well, it, dis it displays that it has. 27,455 entries and I am doing the same with the test.info and we can see the result here well moving on let's print out the shapes uh, well it helps us to visualize the data uh, well the training shape is 27,455 and 785 and this is the test shape well let's visualize some data so as you can see that all the data are 28 in the 28 format as I have reshaped them and these are the sign languages. Well, moving on. Well, now let's see the labels. So if I run this cell, we can see that there are 0 to 24 labels and these are the counts of the labels. And moving on to the next cell, well, in the X train, we are dropping the column label of train and loading them in the, into the X train and we are doing the same with the X test and in the Y train we are loading the label of training data and we are doing the same with the Y test and then we are deleting the label from both train and test data sets well now we have to normalize our data because it helps to work our scene in faster to normalize them we are dividing the X train with 255 and then printing out the shapes that we have uh, well it says that our extreme train shape is this then we have to reshape the data well reshape the data into 28 into 20 into 1 and then in the next cell we have to label encode so for that I am importing the label binarizer and then from the model selection I'm splitting the data sets into I'm keeping the 80% of data into the training and the 20% data in the testing phase and printing the shapes well, let's visualize them so if I visualize the x-train of 10th number then you can see that this will be the image well in the next cell sorry in the next cell well we have to define the our model so I'm calling it a sequential model and these are the convolution and max pooling layers and you can see that that our input shape is 28 into 28 and 1 okay so if we if you print this that model dot summary and run this uh, let's run it then you can see that this is our model summary which we have defined here moving on well I have to say one thing that you can add dropouts here which I have not added in this notebook but in the future notebook I will I am going to add that dropout well now we have to uh, compile our model for for the loss 
I am using the categorical cross entropy because it is a multi class problem and I am keeping the metric is accuracy. Well, in the next cell, I have to define the epoch and the batch size. I am for for this video, I am using 10 epochs, but if you if you use 50 or more epochs, the result will be getting better. Well, now here comes the data augmentation part. Well, I have write all the documentation of the of this well, what can I say features or functions so you can read them out and understand. Well, on the next cell, I'm def I'm fitting the uh, fitting the model in the feed generator and if i run it then it will start training well i have already trained it uh, to my well what can i say speed up this video and you can see that the loss is 0 0.3 and the accuracy is 0 0.87 and our validation lot loss is 0 0.07 and the validation accuracy is 0 0.97 oh. so let's plot them well, the uh, this that was not the result well if we plot them then you can see that see this curve uh, the red curve is trading accuracy and the another curve is validation accuracy well i hope you enjoyed the video all the necessary files links and description description of data set are in the description box below please do check them if you have any kind of query don't forget to leave a comment below well, thanks for watching. See you soon.